This has been challenging. 21 lives have been lost. That does not include that five-year-old boy. We had over 200 search and rescue folks out there uh, over the course of last week plus. The only thing they found is that one shoe, that one Nike shoe. Uh, and we won't give up until we find Kyle. Uh, and hopefully, miracle of miracles, he'll be okay. But 21 known deaths so far. Uh, we had nine atmospheric rivers, a stacking of stress, this conveyor belt uh, going back 22 days, trillions of gallons of water the state of California. We estimate over 1,400 heroic rescues. Those are the lives that were saved that didn't become headlines. Um, you know, I say this often about politics. Unlike baseball, you don't get credit for saves. Uh, all the extraordinary work, 93 agencies, local, state, regional, federal agencies coming together, doing heroic work 24-7. Uh, folks that you would expect from FEMA and uh, folks that we would all would come to expect at CAL FIRE and our local police and fire and sheriffs, uh, but also our, our, our conservation corps. Incredible work the National Guard did to mitigate damage, to pre-position, to prevent, to save lives. That was our number one priority. In closing, we're now here uh, talking about turning the page and we're talking about the resilience of California. We're talking about being here when all of you are gone. When the cameras are gone, when all the attention, spotlights taken off, that's when California is at its best and we do our best work, but we could not do that without federal support. Final words. On January 4th, we declared a state of emergency. Four days later, before I can even request it, Chief of Staff, the President of the United States reaches out and says yes, in anticipation of what I had yet to request, and that was a presidential declaration. I checked my voicemail. The president already left a voicemail saying, what do you need? Four days after that, we requested a major disaster declaration. I sent out FEMA director who's again back here with us after just a few days of detailed assessment. Now we over half a dozen, now seven counties that are included in a major disaster declaration. Trust me, that matters. When you're cynical again around government, relationships, or you feel like things are frayed, and things have become too polarized, hope you'll consider these moments, that spirit of collaboration, cooperation, the things that define the best of who we are. And the best, of course, uh, I think, of who we are uh, in America is representing the person that I'm honored uh, to welcome uh, to his podium. Uh, Mr. President, it is an honor to have you back here. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Well, Governor, you and I got to stop taking these helicopter rides. We've made a bunch of them. You've been hit. Uh, if anybody doubts the climate is changing, then they must have been asleep for the last uh, couple of years. I want to thank you, Governor. Uh, you and I, along with the Vice President, have been in close touch since this storm hit. And even before it hit, when we were talking about it coming, we, uh, we told the governor that we do everything we can, whatever he needs. But he's been through a whole hell of a lot. I don't know how we had three or four flights uh, up and down the state for the wildfires and the damage done. It's been astounding what you've done. And uh, I want to say what I said then, and I'll say again. The federal government is not leaving its responsibility till it's all fixed. It's done. You know, Mr. Mayor, or Madam Mayor, uh, I want to thank you and the county supervisor, the local officials, the first responders, for all that you have done and all you have been dealing with to try to protect your constituents in a way that gives them some, I guess, maybe the thing that's most needed in these times is a sense of, of hope that everything's going to be able to be done, everything's going to be able to be fixed. And uh, I want to thank the entire California delegation for working with my administration. Alex and Jimmy, thank you for you, what you've done being with me today. And, you know, <clears throat> we did an aerial tour of the damage. And unlike when we did the aerial tour of the fires, uh, it's not as obvious from the air just how much damage has been done. You get, we flew over the entire area. 
in parts of the state, the entire, you know, they got more rainfall in a single day than they get in an entire year in parts of the state. Drenching rains, powerful winds, floods, landslides, but uh, you don't feel it till you walk the streets or what you, when you're able to walk. And, uh, you know, it's you know, toppling of thousands of trees, 20,000 customers, 200,000 customers lost their power through the storms. Now it's less than 5,000, but it's still 5,000 people don't have power. we got to get it down to zero. Nearly 150,000 people were under evacuation orders. Now it's down to 1,400 under evacuation orders, and under 300 people are still in shelters. But tragically, 21 people died, and that little boy we're still trying to find. Everybody I've talked to so far today just spontaneously brings that up. You know, uh, the fact is, uh, you know, Jill and I have him in our prayers, the family in our prayers, and, and all of you. You know, while the situation uh, is still treacherous, we're cautiously optimistic that uh, the worst part is behind. The waters recede, but we'll see the full extent of the damage to the homes, the businesses, and the farms and ranches. And we now, uh, we know some of the destruction is going to take years to fully recover and rebuild. But we got to re not just rebuild, we got to rebuild better. We got to rebuild better. Last week I signed an expedited major disaster declaration for the state of California. Yesterday I directed the federal government that will cover 100% of the cost of removing debris and emergency measures like sheltering evacuees and paying overtime <clears throat> for first responders for the next 60 days. <clears throat> Excuse me, for 60 days. And right now, more than 500 employees of FEMA are out here and other federal agencies on the ground trying to help people. FEMA positions supplies for 100,000 meals, 100,000 liters of water, 20,000 blankets, 10,000 cots for shelters, and will be disaster recovery centers in every impacted area, including Santa Cruz and Merced, where uh, survivors can apply for assistance and if their homes or their small businesses have been damaged. That's already underway. The Army Corps of Engineers is helping remove heavy debris and, uh, uh, safely and uh, monitoring seven reservoirs in the Central Valley and the San Francisco Bay Area. I've instructed my administration to bring every element, every element of the federal government together with the help of immediate needs to long-term rebuilding to do both. We have to, in terms of the infrastructure, there's got to be significant changes been made, and the federal government's going to be here to help get that done. For example, the Department of Agriculture is helping farmers with disaster loans and grants if they lost livestock or their crops were washed away. So the Small Business Administration, and some of you with me when I just went through the small business along the piers here, it's devastating what happened. But they're going to get help, help local businesses with low interest loans so they can recover. And now, if you, have, if you don't have insurance, or if you're underinsured, FEMA's going to get you started on home repairs, and replacing lost or damaged property like cars, or refrigerators, things inside the home. They'll be able to be replaced quickly. To apply for assistance from FEMA, you can go online to disasterassistance.gov. Disasterassistance.gov. You can also sign up in person for disaster recovery centers in the coming days. There are going to be at least seven centers open across this state, and FEMA is going to deploy disaster survivor assistance teams to communities that need them the most. We can go to the FEMA website to find that location. And look, as I've said on other disasters, the key is not just building back, it's building back stronger. Just because since I became president, we've spent $9 billion in disaster assistance to California for the extreme weather events they've had to go through. Nine billion, and these weeks have shown the compounding effect of the disasters. For example, places that were ravaged by past wildfires are now at a higher risk of landslides. Extreme weather caused by climate change means stronger and more frequent storms, more intense droughts, longer wildfire seasons, all of which threaten communities across California. So we have to invest in stronger infrastructure to lessen the impacts of these disasters because they become cumulative in a sense. We've already allocated funding from the infrastructure law that I signed a year ago and more than $16 billion for more than 480 projects across this state. 
We're making the, the California power grid more resilient, building stronger levees, clearing hazardous fuels and for reforesting lands protecting, uh, to protect against wildfires. And together, we can better prepare for future disasters, reduce the damage they cause, and the people's lives and livelihoods that are affected. So let me close with this. To the people in California, I say it again. The country is here for you and with you. We are not leaving till things are built back and built back better than they were before. You can recover from storms. We'll be with you every step of the way. And I mean that sincerely, every step. And God bless you all. And may God protect our first responders, who we owe more than I could take time to talk about today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, the only, I, I will answer the question, but here's the deal. You know, what quite frankly bugs me is that we have a serious problem here we're talking about. We're talking about what's going on, and the American people don't quite understand why you don't ask me questions about that. But having said that, what's your question? Hang on, okay, look. As we found, uh, we found a handful of documents were failed, uh, were filed in the wrong place. We immediately turned them over to the archives and the Justice Department. We're fully cooperating, looking forward to getting this resolved quickly. I think you're going to find there's nothing there. I have no regrets. I'm following what the lawyers have told me they want me to do. It's exactly what we're doing. There's no there there. Thank you. Guys, guys, this way. Thanks, guys. Careful. Thanks, guys. Yep, stand over from this way.